Today we're checking out this, the HTC One M8 and asking it the age old question. You use one 2023? Let's roll that intro. Since I got this used, there's no unboxing. Fortunately, Mr. Who's the Boss did this a while ago, so let's check out what the unboxing is. So here we have the phone. We also got an HTC branded case, an HTC branded USB-A wall charger, an HTC branded micro USB cable, and a set of HTC branded earbuds with extra ear tip. We also get an HTC branded SIM ejector, but Mr. Who's the Boss never takes it out. As for the phone itself, on the right hand side of the device, we have the volume rocker and the micro SD card slot. On the left side, we have the SIM card tray. The bottom, we have the micro USB and headphone jack, and the top, we have the power button. Let's turn the device on and get on with specs. As for device specs, this was released in March of 2014. It has a 5 inch Super LCD 3 using Gorilla Glass 3. Its resolution is 1080 by 1920 pixels with a 16 by 9 ratio with around 66.7% screen to body ratio. It weighs 160 grams with an aluminum frame and uni body. Its dimensions are 146.4 by 70.6 by 9.4 millimeters. It has dual stereo speakers on the front using HTC's boom sound. CPU is a Snapdragon 801 quad core sitting right around 2.5 gigahertz. Its GPU is an Adreno 330. Its connectivity type supports 3G and 4G LTE, GSM, HSPA, and LTE. For Wi-Fi, this thing has Wi-Fi 802.11, ported dual band, Wi-Fi Direct, DLNA, and Hotspot. Its Bluetooth was Bluetooth 4.0. Its charging port is a USB 2.0 micro USB with mobile high definition link. This allowed you to plug into a TV or display. It supported 18 watts wired via Quick Charge 2 for fast charging. Its battery is a 2600 milliamp hour LiPo non-removable battery. For storage, this came with either 16 or 32 gigabyte with two gigabytes of RAM and that micro SD card slot. Some extra features this thing has is GPS positioning, NFC, an infrared pointer, stereo FM radio and RDS, an accelerometer, gyro proximity, compass and barometer sensor. Its front facing camera is a single 4 megapixel 27mm wide and a 4 megapixel depth sensor. Features HDR, panorama, dual LED, dual tone flash, captures video at 1080p 60fps, 720p at 120fps, HDR stereo surround sound recorded. Its selfie camera is a single 5 megapixel HDR, captures video at 1080p 30fps. Now that we have the specs completed on this device, let's get into the actual device testing. And here we have device testing. Starting things off with our charging test. For our slow charging rate, we had about 0.25% per minute. For our regular charging rate, it was around 0.84% per minute. And our fast charging rate was around 1.02% per minute. For extra tests, we got some benchmarks and did a teardown. Using Basemark OS 2, we got an overall score of 1186, while our Basemark X score got a score of 12,257. Our screen has a contrast ratio of 1,256, and a sunlight contrast ratio of 2.371. Following the iFixit guide for the teardown, we can see the inside. Just a fair warning if you do this yourself, I would recommend getting some pics as the entire unibody is held in using clips. After installing a lot of the updates, now we can get on with apps. So a lot of the apps actually did not install. A lot of them were stuck on the installing page, such as like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Most of the social media apps or entertainment were stuck on that installing page. Now I was able to get things like Spotify and Jetpack Joyride, Subway Surfers, things like that to install. So let's get into app testing. Speaking of apps, we're gonna start out with our camera. For our camera test, I took a bunch of landscape and portrait photos, zoomed in, zoomed out in different light settings to try to get as realistic results as possible. As soon as you go to zoom in on some of the photos, everything gets really pixelated. Now at the same time, I did take a video to tail into our microphone and our video. So let's see what that resulted in. I mean this is recording on the, uh, the HTC One. We're just walking around, looking at all this like trash recycling and stuff. Now, just like other phones from the time, the stabilization was very, very poor. But for the most part, if you kept the photos zoomed out, everything looked good. Since we're on the topic of apps, let's get into gaming. Since I was only able to get Jetpack Joyride and Subway Surfers installed, I did most of the testing on Subway Surfers. Now, both of the games ended up hiccuping a few times but they were mostly playable. Although at times the phone would hit around 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not too good, 
but I believe that's what was causing the hiccuping. Of course, just like any other phone from 2014, these things tend to ran pretty hot. Do I trust those numbers? Not really, since I don't have a thermal camera, but it is what it is. Other than that, the device ran those games pretty well. Since we're on the topic of gaming, let's get into our battery tests. Now, battery tests were interesting, because the thing that mostly drained the battery is the same things we see on today's phones. Playing games, browsing the web, running YouTube, all seem to drain the battery really quickly. Roughly 1.76% per minute of YouTube or basic browsing the web, and roughly 1-2% to per minute of uh, playing games. So everything was pretty much the same in that setting. Well, another test I ran showed it was roughly half a percent per minute, sitting at 50% after around 100 minutes of on and off usage of app installation and other setup. And then with Spotify or the radio, it drops right around a percentage to 2% every 15 minutes. Now battery tests and speakers don't go together, but let's check out our speaker test. Alright, and I just wanted to touch upon any issues I had with this device. There's 34 updates, and most of it is like the bloatware. Tell you, this Google's really slow with full Wi Fi. <laughs> like, really slow. And I was finally actually able to get those um, apps updated. So now we're gonna try installing, you know, like TikTok or Instagram again and see if that will work. Even most of the pre installed bloatware had some troubles working. Phone's freaking out. All I wanna do is just turn off. Power receiver mode. All right, I fixed it. Also, HTC Sync Manager just didn't want to work at all. And that covers all the testing we were able to do with this device. So for what it was at the time, this thing was great. So now we can answer that question of, is it usable in 2023? Since I was not able to test cellular, I can't give a definitive answer. I tried multiple times contacting AT&T for assistance and using their online unlock tool, but they didn't want to unlock the device. Now the big question, would I suggest going out and buy one? Not really. With its limited app support, tendency to heat up, and not so great battery life, it doesn't fare too well. If we check sites like eBay, we can find them for around 20 to 50 bucks in the used market, unless there are no better alternative devices for the same or similar price. You can flash a custom Android OS, and that would give it more support, which is a route I want to try, and if I do, I'll create a tutorial for you all. Now if you currently own this device and want a second use, you could try the custom OS, or use it in its current state of Google Maps or home music player, as the device just needs to be plugged in all the time. And that concludes our HTC One M8 in 2023 review. If there's anything specific you want me to review, comment down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.